We all remember in June when the Warriors lost the NBA Finals in historic fashion. The Cavaliers took them down in Game 7 after Golden State was up three games to one. And now that Steph Curry is three months removed from that loss, he says he's still reflecting on it, saying this to USA Today Sports. I still haven't gotten over Game 7. That's something that will stay with me pretty much forever for good and bad reasons. Obviously, you hated the feeling, but it's also a motivator to come back even stronger and try not to have that feeling again. I'm at that point now where I can try to fuel any kind of terrible nightmares or thoughts about Game 7 into motivation for how I'm going to prepare myself for this year. So terrible nightmares and thoughts now fuel. Stephen A., your reaction? Well, you have reasons to be scared. Uh, Steph Curry is a superstar in this league because he's the greatest shooter we've ever seen. The guy averaged 30 last year, 50% shooting from the field, 45% shooting from three-point range. Most of his shots are from the perimeter, and he still hit 50% of his shots and averaged 30 and has won the uh, league MVP for the second time in as many years, and nobody was disputing the fact that he's clearly the league MVP. He is a superstar uh, because he makes shots from everywhere. But that's not the Steph Curry we saw in Game 7. He has some making up to do, which is why you take those quotes very seriously. It's not that they lost. It's that you can make a legitimate argument that they lost because of him. 17 points in Game 7, 6 of 19 shooting from the field, that's 31%. 414 shooting from three point range, that's 28%. Numbers far below what he registered in, in, you know, throughout the regular season. When you combine that with some key pivotal turnovers, sort of laissez faire attitude towards protecting the ball, Steph Curry was not 100%. And anybody who thinks he was 100% and just struggled, they don't know basketball. They don't know this guy bas playing basketball because this brother was not 100% at all. You could see it. But it still doesn't excuse some of the turnovers, some of the recklessness with the basketball at key pivotal moments, you know, derailing momentum. And here's the biggest thing it doesn't derail. We've been talking so much about what Steph Curry didn't do. We have not spoken enough about what a dude by the name of Kyrie Irving did to Steph Curry. I mean, he was giving it to him. Every chance Kyrie Irving got. When he saw Steph Curry in front of him defending him, you could literally see him drooling at the mouth, just salivate from the opportunity to dance on this brother and give it to him. And that last jump shot from the right wing beyond the three-point line that Kyrie Irving hit to seal the deal in the first championship in over 50 years for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kyrie Irving averaged 27 for the finals. It's not a moment. I mean, he was... He was Busting their butt. And that includes Klay Thompson to a, to, to a lesser degree. But primarily Steph Curry. So when Steph Curry makes these kind of quotes, I'm like, uh-oh, because here he comes. He's going to need to come, even though he was not 100%. And he was injured. And it wasn't a god-awful performance. It wasn't what we expected from Steph Curry. He has some making up to do. And that means that everyone should be very, very scared. Because with the acquisition of Kevin Durant, one thing is very clear. He may miss some shots in terms of getting opportunities because Kevin Durant's going to take some of those shots away from him. The flip side is the shots that Steph Curry actually does get, they're going to be open ones. And he's not, he's not one of the miscontested ones. So Lord help us all what he's going to do if he's open, which is why I'm ticked off for Kevin Durant going there, because it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a walk in the park, as far as I'm concerned, which irritates me. He wasn't 100% Steph Curry. And that's a shame, because two years ago when he won the MVP, I thought, but he's not the best player in the world. <clears throat> you could see LeBron still better than him. He won the regular season MVP. And he was something less than his best self in the finals that year, two years ago, when they won the whole thing. LeBron was the best player in the finals. He didn't have any help. Kyrie and obviously Kevin Love both hurt. But the following season, Stephen A., for several months, I thought Steph Curry's the best player in the world. He, 
he was not only the MVP the previous season, he was the most improved player off yep. his MVP season. This is something new. He's hitting shots from so far away. Everyone has extra space. And he was inspiring kids because they looked at him, they go, he's, you know, he, no one his size was ever considered the best player in the game, ever. But, but he was. Even when Nash was winning MVPs, even when Iverson, they were never considered the best player in the game during Kobe and Shaq and all but Steph, maybe he is the best player in the game. And kids could look at him and go, he's not the tallest. He's not the fastest. He doesn't jump the highest in a sport that rewards all that. But through practice, whether true or not, they, he made people feel inspiration. He, if I practice my handles, if I practice my shot, I could be the best one day. So I really love Steph Curry. I love watching him play. But Stephen A. Smith, in the finals, he was not only not 100% physically which was clearly true. Even when he switched on to bigs, he couldn't get separation. His, he was messed up physically. But he had his heart taken against LeBron James. LeBron James took his heart. It gives me no pleasure to say that. Here's the proof in the pudding. I disagree with that. It's mentally not being 100% that was the problem, and I think that's what's eating at him right now. Here's the proof in the pudding. He wasn't good physically against the Thunder either. He was out-athleted by Westbrook and Durant. But with the chips on the line... In Game 7, in the fourth quarter, I was there. We saw each other there. Steph Curry was the best player on the floor, so his team won the Western Conference Finals. It's the history of the NBA. In a close Game 7, who has the best player on the floor? That team's going to win. That was the Warriors. That was Steph Curry because Durant and Westbrook never got in his head. And by the way, fourth quarter of Game 7 against the Thunder, five of six shooting, two of three on threes, and his team won. But the fourth quarter of Game 7 against the Cavs, after LeBron not only dominated him physically, but let him know it, dunked on him, got in his face. and, and Game Steph, six. Game six. And right. Steph kind of slinked off as LeBron is domineering over him. That Steph he didn't Curry. He slink off. He looked at him like, what? No, he looked at him like, what? Like, oh, I don't want that. No, please. One for six shooting in the fourth quarter of game seven at home, plus a, a kind of careless turnover behind the back. That's someone who got mentally dominated. It's okay, it's part of the learning curve. That could happen. Muhammad Ali did it to George Foreman. Never happened to Foreman again after that. In his second career, Foreman learned from that. Steph can learn from it. But what happened was the best player in the world imposed himself physically, let Steph know about it, and changed him mentally. You're wrong. You're wrong. Steph Curry is a smaller player. Steph Curry is a shooter. His shot wasn't falling, and Kyrie was giving it to him. You keep talking about LeBron. LeBron did not snatch Steph Curry's heart. I love the way that LeBron James got in his face, but make no mistake about it. When you are a smaller dude, but you are a marksman, you're not scared of anybody because you don't believe your success or failure is about anybody else. You believe it's about making shots. What I'm happened about, to his shot? Why, didn't, why wasn't it I'm saying he, wasn't, he was hurt. And he wasn't, what about, okay, but what about the behind, careless behind the back I, I brought pass? The, the I, I, brought, I brought all of those points up, but that doesn't mean you choke. That means you messed up. What happened? That's a difference. But choke, no, no, no. Cho no definition no, no, of choking no, no, is messing up no, under pressure. No, no, no. The definition of choking is doing things that you normally do and then suddenly not being able to do it because of pressurized moments. Whereas throughout this series, periodically, Steph Curry was like that. He wasn't himself all series long. Now, if it but was that just, was the same if, thing if, against if, the Thunder, if, if he but in game play, seven, if, if, Steph he came Curry, if Steph Curry was playing ball lights out games one through six, and then all of a sudden disappears in game seven, you have a point. But there were a myriad of games during the finals where Steph Curry didn't show up to the point where we all knew that Draymond Green was going to get MVP if they had won the game. It wasn't going to be Jeff no Steph doubt, Curry that's because he point. wasn't there. That's my point. Physically, he was compromised. He couldn't do the things he normally does. That's but not choking. Money, but wait, with the money on the line against the Thunder, he was better than Durant. We he was better than Westbrook. Why wasn't he able to do anything? Because of including a, because, pass the ball. Because of attrition. Because he wasn't one hundred percent. Because LeBron and it got, the, got in his head. No, I don't think so. That's why it's eating so. at him right no, now. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not when it comes to a marksman. Regardless Shooters of what don't it is, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder this year, and he's going to learn a lot yes. from it. And that is very scary. Obviously. Love you, Steph, but.